welcome to the Ted versus Ten, which, which I am Steph. I'm Nick. I am Mike. Oh my goodness! And today we are bringing you board games with a particular artist, and this Ooh. artist is Clemens Franz. Clemens oh, Franz. He we're is switching it up on you now. Very prolific. He be doing some art once in a while. <laughs> Clemens Franz has has. Uh, Dip the pen onto a board or two over the over the years. He hand paints every board, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. He's prolific. He does a lot of pieces, and it's very particular. Like you can kind of pick his art out, like with a, a, any game on the shelf, almost. Like oh, here's the thing, La Havre. Yeah, you may not know who Clemens Franz is, but the second we show you a picture, you're gonna be like, you will oh. know who Clemens Franz is. You're like, oh, that yeah. guy. Yeah, I'm with it. He has a very unique art style, which is good because he's instantly recognizable, you know? Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of, in board games, a lot of the uh, most popular artists, they usually have something that's fairly identifiable. You can pick out a Vincent Dutrait piece yes. versus a Clemens Franz. He's Fr got the same thing. Right. You can instantly pick it out. Yeah, right? so I, mean, I think that's a good thing, right? You have a style, it's a signature thing. As, as a, a visual artist, it's a good thing. Okay, Nick would know. Nick is you the artist, You want someone to be able know. to recognize your piece. Okay. You know. You don't want to be a chameleon? No, no, okay. you want you want to, you look at a piece, you can see it across from you, you're like, oh, that's a Kahende Wiley. And you're like, all right, cool. Spoken like a true artist over you here. Know, so we can tell right away. It's so, instantaneously. Uh, so yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do Clemens Franz games, uh, and and uh, we're talking about kind of our our favorites. Yeah. Uh, the games we like and stuff, and the art's obviously a big piece of that. It I is. Think. A big piece like of it helps bring you into the world. Say so yeah, this might be kind of kind of around if you watch some of our top tens. You're like, oh, why isn't this game on their list? It might be because we like the art better, or it's just it's kind of a, a different list when you're when you're going off of art, you know, and and yeah. art and how much you enjoy the game. So jumping right into our BGG's top 10 list, we have BGG's number 10 coming in at rank 112 Ooh. is Aura et Labora. Aura et Labora. Aura et Labora. This is a, an <laughs> Uwe game that uh, we have not played. No. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. It's so good. So what happens in this game is that all these buildings are going to come out and each round a few more buildings and stuff like that. And you're going to be building up your own personal little like area. You're gonna cut down the wood and collect resources, but the, the mm. resources, if, if you let them build up, they're a common pool. So the, the, the longer you wait, the more resources will be there, but everybody has access to this common pool. So you don't wanna get it oh, too okay. far than somebody oh. else might take it first. So you're like, well, if I wait one more turn, maybe I can get it. And it's all about turn order at that point. Okay. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to be first in this round. Okay, so let's see. I, I, could, the I could see me every time there's games like that, and I'm like, I'm going to wait one more round. It's going to build up this way. And then Nick's just like, and that's mine. <laughs> what like, were we doing? We were playing oh, Raccoon Tycoon, and Mike uh, kept trying to build up the stock market. I kept being like, I'm going to sell three things and just lower just it for him. Just kept dumping the market on me. I'm like, why? Because I, I do, kept waiting. I like I like communal resources. It's so interesting. Because it's so stressful in a good way. Yeah. Oh, the whole idea that I'm sure you you're gonna need to build things up. You're gonna need those moments uh, to to be able to make your thing. But then if you don't get that turn order, rough. You just get absolutely hosed, yeah. and then and then now you're just like, well, let me well. get my axe out again and start with this new tree. <laughs> Sadly, in a forest, chopping you know. it down. Yeah. So it's it's a big, you know, resource management Uber, and you know, build up to get all the points kind of game. And it, it's just, it's a big game and yeah. it's fun. That I sounds like, fun. I like, I like, I mean, it's a solid Euro. I mean, like a lot right? of Uber Rosenberg <laughs> games. Absolutely. Yeah. That sounds fun. Or at Labora sounds like one I really want to try. I do want to try it, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into our top 10. We know that's why people are here. They want to see the three amigos that's give right. their list. That's right. All right, our number 10 from the three amigos comes in at number 274 on Board Game Geek, but it's number 10 for us. It's Altiplano. Altiplano, indeed. Altiplano. Ooh, Altiplano. You're, you're cruising around uh, Peru and you're, yeah. you're, you're trading stuff. It's a, it's a, a bag builder. It's yeah. kind of a, the successor to Orleans. Yeah. Uh, very similar where you're trying to, to get the right chips uh, and draw them out to be able to activate different things. And they have this kind of uh, added... Bit that Orleone doesn't have where you have to actually kind of travel around yeah. 
uh, the perimeter, the perimeter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, to to go to these different kind of locations mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah. So, and it also is that unlike Orly on this one, you actually do empty your bag, kind of like a deck. Yeah, if you would, use the pieces, they go into a, like a discard pile. Right. So they don't always go back in your bag like they do for uh, Orly on. Right. I like the llama, honestly. It's an alpaca. Oh, sorry, it's not even a llama. It's You're right. looking foolish I right look now, foolish man. Right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize to all alpacas watching this. Sorry, man. Um, that's I'm not apologizing. You're right. It's an alpaca. That's right. It's not a llama. It's way cuter than a llama. Let's be honest. Nah, they're probably. Different. You tell an alpaca to his face that it looks just like a llama. <laughs> no, I'm gonna see get, what happens. I'm gonna get kicked right in the chest. Yeah, that. yeah. They don't really like that. They I really like, that. like the alpaca. I think it's super cute. With with Altiplano, yeah, the art is definitely more like. Ooh, it just yeah. sucks you in. I don't know. Seth, do you a, agree? It's a good game, yeah. I like it. Again, I would always choose to play Orleans over it. Um, it I think like it just it goes on a little bit too long for, for my taste, I guess. Okay. I feel like this is always one where it's like whatever one of these you played first is the one you like more. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people who play Old Plano like it more than Orleans is we because definitely, they played it first. We definitely ran into <laughs> people that said that, like, oh, no, I like Alti Plano way better and yeah. stuff. And then I think, uh, you know, for us, Orleans is... is kind of maybe the, the better one, but I think in terms of art, if we're kind of thinking about it in an artistic mm -hmm. form, since we are doing Fre I Clemens like Franz, I like the art in this one better, even though it's very oh, much yeah. the same style. Oh yeah, I agree. Style. If we're thinking yeah. about it in the art terms, I agree that Altiplano is a lot more like visually. Yeah, prettier, it's cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, that's our number 10, Altiplano, a good game, a good successor to uh, Orlau. Um, and let's go into BGG's number nine. That many. ranked number nine coming in at 98 is Lorenzo Di Magnifico or something. The Lorenzo. Lorenzo. I just call it Lorenzo. Lorenzo. The Magnificent Lorenzo. Good for Clemens Franz. Yeah. His number nine ranked game is already in the top 100. Pretty awesome. Steph, prolific. What do you think about this one? I am, I'm mixed on Lorenzo. So you know what's funny is like I, I like it until you add in the the hand of cards where people draft them at the beginning or just get dealt them at the beginning because right. those I just feel like are just a little bit too much for me and okay. But with that being said, I really like the new dice uh, the new card game that came out. Oh the, okay okay there cool. There was one that, that just one. came out at Essen. It was Ooh. like I forget exactly what it's called, but it's. Lorenzo, the, it's like a card game version of it with marbles and it has like an own kind of mechanic. Oh. Anyway, I'm very much excited about that new game because it plays in half the time. Ooh. But regarding Lorenzo, I like the card, you know, the card mechanic where you you have to get the cards from the center of the board. Yes. And work your own little engine and... and there's a lot of cool things going on in that game. I always just, those three dice are just like... Devilish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they never go in my favor. No, no, no. Come on, it's dice. <laughs> yeah, they're dice, against you. Yeah. That's the thing about it is there is a lot going on in that there game, is, yeah. and we've I've only played it once, but I was just like, huh? And 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 my buddy who was teaching us the game like knows it, so he knows like how to work everything, you know, kind of work yeah. the system and and get up these things. And I was just like, ah, yeah. And I was just always like behind everything, yeah. like oh, I'm gonna do this now. And he's like, I'm yeah. way out of I want to play it again because we're we're playing with Jimbo Slice and like. I just like, I really wanted to play this game. I've been wanting yeah. to play it for years, and like, we finally played it, and I was kind of like, oh, and and it, I'm like, I feel like I should have liked it more though. So I really want to try it again to see if yeah. it's maybe just because I was too new to it, or I just didn't understand what I was doing well enough because yeah. I feel like I should have liked it more, which is why I'm kind of conflicted on it. You know, we'll have to see. More plays will tell, but I've people again. quite like it. You know, it's a number nine. Or Clemens I mean, there's anyway. a lot of good things to like. I haven't played it with the expansion, which might add more cards and more um, variability. So that could also help because I felt I feel like the same cards you're going to see all the time yeah. in the base game. Right. So it can get a little stale that way. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I think there's a solid game here, and I, it's one I would happily play if it shows up on the table. Got a good cover too. Just great talk, cover. Talk about the art. It's got good it, cover. The cover is great. I love that. That's cover. important. Brings yeah. you in. Uh, anyway, that was number nine from Board Game Geek. But it's time to get to the Three Amigos number nine. All right, our number nine is ranked 3,040 on BGG, but I think it's because Garbage. it's brand spanking new. <laughs> it is Expeditions of Newdale. When, when you gave me the task of finding um, Franz's artwork, I was like, well, this one's sitting on the shelf and I want to play it so badly, so I got it played just and just to see if it would make my list. And it 
totally makes my list. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I know. It, it's like one of the best games that I've played from Essen that, so far. It, it is really good. Um, have you guys heard of or played Oh My Goods? I've never played it, but I've heard, yeah, I've heard of it yeah. a billion times. I must try, or maybe we should try this instead. I don't know. Is this kind of well, related? Okay, so, so Oh My Goods is a little card game. It came out several years ago. Right. Um, and it's a very fast engine builder. You get cards, you play cards, you make up a little chain of production if you can but it ends so quickly you never get that feeling of a chain that you can make so like right. you might get the cows to make the meat later but you need to find the meat card and and all these I different see. things to to make the chains happen and you don't really ever get that full feeling now this new game um expedition to newdale um also oh my goods has the same art <laughs> with club and france for, for those keeping go. track. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the Expedition to Newdale is a big version of this, and it's a campaign, so you can play over eight games, or you can just play single games if you wish. And you, it has a similar card mechanic where you can build these different cards, but you have more control over what you're building, and you're visiting these different locations on a map, so you're, you could place houses down and gain extra bonuses and everybody has unique goals and there's a lot of different things. And I only played the first game, but I'm just like, I want to go play all the other okay. games. That's <laughs> wow. awesome. Yeah. If you like Oh My Goods, it really gives you that full experience of, okay. of, a, of a big game of Oh My Goods. It makes me excited because there are certain instances where you get some sort of engine built up and the game kind of ends right when you're like, yeah. oh, but I just want to play with I the engine now. I want to run it. I just got my engine you know? built. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is, uh, I'm I'm very intrigued now by that. That sounds really cool. Yeah. It is It is that good. It was that good. All for right. me to put it in my top <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, five. Though. That's super right. cool. So that is our number nine from the Three Amigos. Let's go ahead and get into number eight from Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek Ranking 8 comes in at oh. ranking 91 overall, and that is Grand Austria Hotel. Should be Ooh. higher. Should be higher. Should be so much higher. It should, should be higher. <laughs> it might be. It might. Well, so <laughs> this game is really great. I, I like it a lot, but I, I have to say I like it best with two. When oh, I played yeah. before, it's been nothing but a drag. Only way to play so. it. I, I'm saying it. I will, do, I will do two all day long. Uh, I will do three. If the third person's very decisive. I have to be... You, everybody needs to know the game at that point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, you really do. Because even if everyone knows the game, it's going to slow down. Because it has a snake draft uh, mechanic, which is really great. It's these dice. Uh, and you're going to, depending on player count, you're going to roll out a certain amount of dice to start. Um, and, and they're going to go based on their pips to different kind of action yeah, uh, spaces. Do, yeah. And the more dice that are in a certain column, kind of the better that action will be. Yeah. So if you're going to get money and there's four dice, you're going to get more money by taking that dice. There's a lot to think about and you're trying to ultimately um, convince guests to stay in your hotel. Yep. So they're they're off hanging out in the cafe. Yeah, they got, you got a cafe at the bottom of your hotel. The yeah. cafe. Everyone they're, they're coming to the, the hotel bar. You know? It's not hotel guests only in the no, cafe. No, no. Uh, so you have enjoy. famous and random people. Random people. I don't even know. That. There's a crazy mix of people in this cafe. And they, they want uh, things like coffee and wine and cake and strudel. And if you give them the kind of things they want, they might be convinced to stay Maybe. in your hotel. But you need to have rooms for them. So there's just so much... You gotta make sure you, you have a room first of the right what color. You want to get done, done. Oh, and ever. it's all dependent on those dice. You never dice. can get oh, anything never. done. <laughs> if you if you need fives, you just guarantee no fives will get rolled. So there's a lot to think about, and that's the problem. If you go more than two player, you you can't plan ahead because yeah. you don't know what dice are gonna happen. Yeah. If it's two player, it's snappy. Yeah, it, it is. is. Boom, 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 boom. Well, you could always pass your turn and then take away a die and roll everything at the end, which is what I do all Yeah, long. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but then you get fewer dice choices, and oh, it never works But out. It, it, it's at least an option, right? Yeah, and so, I mean, it was a fantastic game in terms of that, that thinkiness and the yeah. order and trying to get everything to work, and you're just trying to make these dice somehow fit into your plan. It won't. Um, yeah. And a two-player, it's just oh, delicious. It is it's a it's a good theme for I mean it's it's unique You're like you don't really see that theme. Anyway, that is a Grand Austria Hotel, fantastic game uh, number eight from uh, uh, the folks of Board Game Geek. You might see it again later from us, but let's go ahead and get into our number eight. Our number eight comes in at sixty seven overall on Board Game Geek, and it is Patchwork. I mean, come on, Patchwork. Who yeah. hasn't played Patchwork? 
Oh, you know okay. what? I love to play it at two player the best. That is, <laughs> that's a good count. That's a good it's count a, for it, right? It's the best count. It's kind of the only the count, count if you think about it. Yeah, that's true. So in Patchwork, and we're, we're also going to kind of add like Patchwork Doodle. I really like Patchwork Doodle. Because it's a roll and write right. version of it. And the cool thing you can't play more rights. players with that, though, just so you know. You can. Yeah. You can. Yes, you can. Infinite people. And in that one, you get to be Clemens Frowns because you get to draw it in yourself. Uh, but in patchwork, yeah, you're you're built. You're making a quilt with polyominal shaped tiles, yeah. and you're trying to make it all kind of work. And you're trying to fill in as much of your your kind of planned quilt space as possible. Yeah. Uh, and you can you have to pay in buttons and time. Yeah. And uh, you have the ability to get some buttons back by either passing on your turn and catching up with your opponent, and you get kind of like a little button economy going from buttons that appear on your quilt, and it's just a fun little. Puzzle game, you cut know, it's kind too. of it's mean. It's it's weirdly cutthroat, but also zen. I don't know, Steph. Do you like patchwork? Are you in any of the, the oh, patchwork? Very much. I, it's all about those little one by one squares. Yes, the little yes, leather, the, the little leather, leather scraps. Do you spend yeah. more time to jump over that oh. one by one? Yes, always. Yes, always. Yeah. The battle over the leather scraps is is so contentious and I'll play with my lady and she'll get like four out of the five of them and I'm just so angry. I'm like, I'm just, you could give me one more. She's like, I need it. I'm like, you did, you put it in the corner. It was just a throwaway scrap and she's just like, gotcha, foo. You know, and she's, she beats me a lot at it and I just, the scraps. I never win. So that's oh. probably what happens to me is like, I, 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 I make, on terrible choices because I want those one by ones and yeah. then it's just like it's well rough. now what I know <laughs> very fun it's so for quilting it's as brutal as quilting is in real life I'm sure it's brutal it is it was stabbed to the, with those oh with yeah those, man those, those oh darning needles and things yeah <laughs> those, are, those are weapons wild. why do you think they don't even be that things sharp are wild that they are that sharp yeah. because I'm just saying shaving people I'm pretty sure that's what Raphael used in the first stage of Turtles <laughs> they're just kind of long and pointed <laughs> right? in the back the just angrily angstly <laughs> knitting in the back just, it's a good it's a good outlet that's all I'm saying uh, anyway, Patchwork is super fun. Uh, most people have heard of it. Uh, it's around. There's Patchwork Express, Patchwork Doodle. Uh, I think there's a, a Patchwork uh, Kids version. There's apps and things. Express. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I haven't played Express yet. So I haven't either. Because I'm just like, why? how do you what Expressify it? Patchwork? Like it's kind of short. I don't know. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's good though. Uh, anyway, so uh, Patchwork is our uh, number eight. Yeah. And let's go ahead and get into Board Game Geeks number seven. BGG's number seven and overall number 67 is actually Patchwork. Hey. Oh. Hey. Let's got done talking I about told that. you people check played it. Out. I knew it. <laughs> yes. Go check out the last number. Uh, it's still fun. I will say. It's weird shit. We if still I can like it. <laughs> about Patchwork just a teeny bit, it takes up a lot of table. For it being does. such a small game, it's kind of got a big footprint, but that's really like the only gripe I can say about it. Right. Well, I mean, so does quilting. You gotta spread Quilt, the yeah, quilt out. Oh, man, Uve thinks of everything. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so good. Smart oh, lad. Uh, now, patchwork is is uh, still fun. It takes up some space. It's brutal. It might not make you friends with whoever you play with, but it's a good you time. Know, I really think that patchwork kind of it wasn't the first like polyonal tile game around, but I feel like it really started the polyonal tile craze where there's so many now. Yeah. And I feel like it really kind of kick started that. That mechanic, I guess. There's been a lot. Yeah. In the many, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But and I want more and more and more and more. Yeah, I'll probably almost can get it. Yeah, it's it's just like good. Like I don't know. Fun. It's just like it's we like puzzles. It's fun to like. How do I make this weird shape work? And it's just kind of Ooh, like a good fun thing. Top ten polyomo tile games. Ooh. Sounds wonderful. Let's do it. <laughs> Should do that. Maybe that's a future list coming. Yeah. So that's BG's number seven. We just talked about it a bunch. So yeah. there's no point us going through all it again. Let's get now our number seven. Boom. It won't be Patrick. This again. guy. So our number seven is number 42, which is the multiple of seven, I think, and it is Lahav. Yes. Uh, <laughs> numbers are fun. Good man. I still like numbers. Lahav is a is a, a worker placement game with Clemens Franz art. Clemens Franz. Where nice. uh, you're working a harbor. You're working a harbor. That and around Lahav, the harbor. I believe, means the fish. Yes, it does. <laughs> so. Or the harbor. Uh, uh, Steph, what what do you like about Lahav? What keeps you coming back? Because I quite like it, but I'm I'm kind of a noob at it, so I'm still figuring my way through the harbor. Oh my goodness, Lahav is one of like the first Uwe Rosenbergs that I got to play. Ooh, first um, Uwe. Now it plays up to five, but it's probably best with two or three players, and. Mm. 
you know what? I actually learned from the app and it was really great learning from the app. <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm 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 I have the app and that's so far the only way I've played and it's cool because they give you like a here's the best thing to do now and I'm like okay yes. so I'm trying to I'm just kind of like playing a, a couple of games and following their instructions and trying to understand why like yeah, okay yeah. why cuz do I need this cuz I'm like what do the brickworks and they're like you don't want brick and I'm like <laughs> Like, Are you sh I think I want. I don't. Break. You know. I don't want this. And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, ha, ha, ha. so I'm trying to figure out my way. But it is fun. It's really so fun. So the, the tricky part about Lahav is that all buildings that everybody builds are available to you. So when you're first learning, you have to kind of see everybody's buildings. So facing right. buildings towards other people is helpful. But um, so on the app, it's very clear because you can click on whatever you want to see, and 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 that that's why it's helpful. And it's really cool because you want to be able to use everybody's buildings because only he might have a shipyard or only he might have a wharf and you need to go use those buildings. Of yeah, course, it comes right. at a cost. And if you own the building, there's no cost. So that's where the trick is and what resources to get in order to get the buildings you want and get the ships that you want. And it's it's a very big game. It, it's And it's, it's wonderful. You just simply move your your little boat along and every round you'll have two or three turns and... Oh, there's a upkeep and a feeding, and the yeah, it's very punishing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, checks out. Checks yeah, out. you got to keep up with the food. You got to keep up with the the resource production, and then and upgrading your resources sort of as time goes forward. Because you start off with like wooden ships, and then you get all the way up to iron and steel and things. And so, yeah, it's a lot of. That's why I kind of follow along with the tutorial saying like, try this, think of that, because there's just, there are a lot of different buildings. You have access to them, but do I have the money for them? And I have to feed my person next turn. And yeah, yeah. there's it's a lot, lot, but it's so good. It's so good. I want, I haven't played it yet. I really want to. This I is probably my more. top like two or three favorite, two or three games that I want to play the most. Yeah. Because I like big Uwe worker placement games yeah. a lot. And so this one, and I don't know, there's something weird about it. I'm just like, yes, it sounds, it, cause I've always heard such amazing things about it. And I'm like, I really want to play it super bad. Let's do it. We'll come together because that's three players. That's a good player count. It's, you got to do it. We got to. It's so yeah, good. Let's do it. Soup's down. So wait, wait, that is Lahav at our number seven. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and get into number six from Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek, number six at... Ranking 63 is one we've talked about quite a bit recently called Mombasa. So I didn't know that this was Clemens Franz. Yeah, this yeah. this is a game that keeps showing up. It means you have to play it. <laughs> showing up on many lists at this point. Yeah, you've helped show us the way. So you've talked about before, Steph, but give us the quick rundown. I know basically here's the thing that I understand. Mombasa has a lot going on. Yeah. There's a lot of different things happening. So it's just a lot. <laughs> different tracks that you're trying to bump up to get um, company shares. Um, you're trying to push different companies onto the board to have more um, domination, if you will. Uh, but everybody has access to all these companies. And there's also a deck building mechanic that's really interesting where it locks up your cards for several rounds. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's lots of different things happening. with the, And it's, it's really elegant. There's just so much happening and you can't possibly do everything you want and yeah, so of course it, not, yeah. that's just it's the tough choices i like those i like games that give you a lot of options but you you gotta make those hard choices of i gotta do this but i have to sacrifice this over yeah. here i'm not gonna be able to do that yeah. right now i gotta focus over here or the locking of cards and how long am i willing to be without this thing you know to pay off for later uh, yeah it's, it does seem like there's quite a lot going on it's obviously very well liked yeah. Um, by people, and we've talked about a lot here on these lists, and that's yeah. Mombasa. I'm Mombasa, you know? Mombasa. Mombasa, awesome, Mombasa. man. Uh, that's Mombasa. number six from Board Game Geek. Let's get into our number six. Number uh, six from us, the three amigos, is number 290, ranked overall, and it's Baron Park. I'm surprised it's not higher. It's another oh. polyominal tiles. Yeah. More polyominoes. You know? I love those little bears. Oh, oh I know. So. I love the koala bears. <laughs> <laughs> I like Better. it. You know what? It's fine. Better bears. <laughs> it's fine. It all works. They're all bears in our eyes here. In this oh, one, you're so building good. out a, a bear park, a bear's specific zoo. Yeah. Uh, that's going to have like polar bears and golden bears, and pandas, and koalas, yep. uh, and um, and they're all, uh, there's all these different kind of uh, 
and polyomal shapes that are different enclosures, mm -hmm. uh, things like restrooms and uh, food courts like and food things, streets, food yeah. streets, and you're, you're basically, they're different shapes and things like that. And you're trying to fill out, starting with one board and then up to four different boards, you're trying to complete your whole park. Uh, and it has this interesting mechanic of whatever you cover up, there's different icons on the board and whatever you cover up is going to dictate the tiles you're going to get for your next turn or for the future in general. So it usually will be that you're playing a tile and you'll get a tile. You might cover up two things, you'll get two tiles yep. for the future. Um, and uh, so throughout the game, you'll have access to like three or four of these kind of really special, unique one-off yeah. tiles that are going to take up a lot of space, yeah, but might three, be... Yeah in a very odd way to get them covered up. Uh, and you're you're trying to kind of race to finish uh, your parks and things like that to get these little statues yeah. and stuff. So it's, it's, all, it's kind of a light game. It's very light, Very yeah. puzzly, but it's uh, super duper fun. So Steph, how do you like Baron Park? Oh, I love it. I think I think it's it's really clever. Um, there there are these goals that I always play with too. So like you want to try and make the patterns happen. You might not play it in your first game, but after that, I don't see why not. Um, I was throw it in. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. goals are great. So there's that. I, I I'm happy to to play this one anytime people request it. But I am more curious about this new expansion that came out. So yes, I want I want to see what adds. All that. <laughs> I yeah, know. I want to play it. Ugh. <laughs> and this is a, a really great gateway game because, again, yeah. it's something that unless people have played like modern hobby board games, they've never seen these kind of like Tetris tile type games, but it's very simple. And you just, uh, I, I try to introduce this game to a lot of people and it's always just like this, just like, yeah. wow. I didn't know games like this existed. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just so cool, but it's so simple and it's cute. And uh, yeah, Baron Park is great. It's so good. It's fantastic, and that's why it's our number six. Let's get it ranked higher on BGG, Real man. quick, yeah. though, about Baron Park. I watched a uh, interview with Phil Walker Harding Praisby, uh, who was the designer of it. Apparently, it was originally going to be about roller coasters. Oh, that right. would be cool, too. Which I'm like, that's <laughs> even cooler than Bear Park. Like, Clemens said, I have a different idea. <laughs> I have a different idea. Koala bears. And you're like, what is that? Bear? <laughs> bears. Koala. Not from Australia. Out of them. Bears. You're like, okay. 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 But yeah, I was like, more roller coaster themed games. Just, but, but has you, Clemens Franz done pictures of roller coasters i'm sure he could he's they just sure look he like could. bears yeah <laughs> mostly look like bears right yeah so just a little tidbit i thought yeah. i'd throw in there Fun I, I was like, i'm like yeah the poly only makes sense yeah, yeah. they can loop these and all sorts of yeah. stuff uh Pretty anyway cool. baron park is our number six let's go ahead and get into board game geeks number five Coming in, Board Game Geeks number five at ranking 45 overall is Clans of Caledonia. It's no. got a big green cover. That's all I know. That's a big green cover. So this, big and green. You know what? The box is actually really kind of small for how much stuff is in it. Um, it definitely, uh -huh. people have, com have, you know, compared it to Tower Mystica. Uh, and I could see that. I mean, so there has a lot of, like, little area controls where you're building up and collecting different like resources and you, you want to manage all these, these different resources in a way. Um, and there's like tech tracks where it's like a market where you can sell your goods or you can buy goods and, and yeah. all these different things that are happening. And, uh, and I like it. It's pretty good. I, I it's not, a, it's not actually one that I own. And so it, I like it enough to play it, but maybe not own it. Okay. There you go. That's fair. So we'll have to find it yeah. at a convention or something. And, always been you know, interested in it, but it's a game where I was like, ah, oh, I'll let someone teach me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you, you definitely want to let somebody teach you yeah. that one. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. one of those many games that are on that list where it's like, I'm not going to seek them out, but I'm not against trying them at all. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like this, like, like, Lahav we talked about earlier. I'm actively seeking out Lahav. But, like, this, right. I'm like, yeah, if someone wants to play it and I have time, it's like, Super sure. Down. Why not? I'm down. Yeah. All it's right. very green. Well, that's Clans of Caledonia for you. Yeah. Boom. Someone teach it to us. All of us. Not Steph. She knows, but uh, the rest of us. <laughs> I <know>. Teach it. <laughs> Steph, teach it to us now. Right now. Uh, anyway, that's Clans of Caledonia number five. Let's get into our number five. All right. So our number five is Luna coming in at 468. On board game geek. So Steph, take us through Luna. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. So Luna is probably one of the first Feld games that I that I've played. Steph That's Stefan right, Feld. Feld. And um, so he this is easily like a huge deep game with so much planning because every round you're going to be moving to different islands basically you're going to want to do different goals for the different islands that are out there so you have to plan accordingly and everything takes a whole lot of thought process so i'm literally sitting there like 
what do I got to do like five turns later? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it's, I'm not good at thinking ahead. Oh my God. I love it so much. So if I can, if I can sit there and plan out my whole game, I, I have a good time with that. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Yeah, Big and puzzly, huh? We've only played a couple of felds. I want to kind of, I want to, I want to go through the felds at yeah. some point. It I think you have to. I mean, you yeah. kind of, you just have to. Because <laughs> we've really liked all the felds we've played. Oh yeah, you I, know? I have, So I'm like, I, we gotta go through the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. we we'll have to go on like a feld grimage. <laughs> I mean, like I love Castle Burgundy and I love Luna just the same. Like they're, okay, it's nice. It's wow. like really up there for me and my favorites because it's it's really yeah. thinky. It's good. yeah, we've played. Castles, we love Carpe Diem. We played La, La Isla, which was fun. Yeah, but I think that's it for Felds, right? I think so. Yeah, and like so. there's so many on the list that I want to try. Um, and Luna, yeah, I, I, I think I can get into those games where you have to plan really ahead because if you pull it off, you feel very clever and mm -hmm. stuff, especially if it's a game that not necessarily like easy or whatever, but it's like you can see the path, you can yeah. like. Visualize it. I like games that I can start to visualize the future a little bit because it's just it's just a fun thing to do. So yeah. this seems like something I'd really like to try. And I imagine with Feld, it's going to be done very well. You know, it's yeah. going to be smart and slick and elegant and stuff. So it'll be, it'll be good mechanics. Like you know? that, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, you gotta try it. You got it. Absolutely gonna try it. That's our number five, Luna, coming in at 468. Let's go into number four from Board Game Geek. BGG's number four at ranking 42 is La Havre. Oh, oh Shocker. what? There's a lot of Uwe on this list. <laughs> Uwe and Clement Franz get along with this. <laughs> yeah, Uwe and Clement Franz are very good friends. <laughs> they, they must be, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. He was just like, draw fish, Clemens. <laughs> He's like, okay. And he's like, all right, that's he's a fish. Good. He's like, good, you're, you're high. Cool. Good, thanks. <laughs> Next one. Wheat. Try it. <laughs> yes. Can you do it? Let's see. Uh, so with Lahab, we, uh, we talked about, yeah. uh, you're working Still a harbor, play it just as much. building buildings, getting the resources and stuff, make sure you can feed your people. Um, get victory points. So good. Get them points. Or get money. that money. Yeah. 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 Still want to try it. Lahav, number four. Boom. Boom. Do it. Let's get into our number four. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. I love it so much. Our number four is something that <laughs> so Nick much. is a big fan of, as uh, are, are we all. It is Suburbia, Suburbia coming I in at it. 118 oh, on so Board much. Game Geek. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put this next to this, and I'll put this Yeah, there's here. all sorts of like adjacency all, bonuses and proximity to things Some matters. Some people don't it's like just... that because it's, it's a lot of micromanaging and a lot of like, oh, did, did that trigger? Do I get that? Da, 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 did I blah, blah, blah. So I can see why, but it comes naturally after you play several games that it's like, all right, I got this going on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it can be a lot to keep track of it, and that can turn some people off. But I want to talk about something with this game, and that's the art. Because this is a Clemens Franz list, we probably Franz. should talk about the art at least a little bit. Because I will defend till I die the art in this game. Because I love the art in this yep. game. And everyone talks about how ugly this game is, and yeah, it ain't great. It's, but here's it's the not thing. ugly, it's plain. It's a suburb. Suburbs are plain, yes. as Mike just said. Applebee's doesn't offend anybody. Exactly. Now that it's Chili's, it's just general suburb stuff. You yeah. know, it's just like, it's. I honestly think it's like a conscious decision. Because if you look at Clemens Franz's other work, like look at the cover of Clans of Caledonia. And it's like, that cover is gorgeous. He can do great work. Oprah oh, yeah. is good at drawing. But I feel like it was a conscious decision between him and probably Bezier Games about no, let's make this look pretty plain because yeah. suburbs are plain. And so I love the artwork in this. I'm knocking my hat off and and just I, I always defend. I love the art. The artwork's great. Fight me in the comments. Do fight it! Me. F I T, fight me. In the comments. Suburbs great. Sorry. It's great. <laughs> it's good. It's all good. I love it. I love everybody. Else. <sighs> it's so good that it makes all the way to number four on our list. 118 overall. So let's go ahead and get into board game geeks number three. Coming in at BGG's number three, ranking overall is 28, is a lot of people's favorites, Agricola. Now, for me, it's not really my favorite. I, I prefer almost any other Uva game. <laughs> Here's the thing. You know, I keep talking about how I want to try all these big Uva games. Yep. Not really this one. No. Nope. I just, I have this weird block against it. I don't know why. I just, yeah. I it's, just, I don't, there's so many other well, things. Well, so, so yeah. my, main, my main gripe is that it's like super mean. The game is mean. People aren't necessarily mean, but the game is like, it's very punishing. 
And so I went in with everybody. I actually played a five-player game, and they all knew what they were doing. I was sitting there like, you know, uh, the butt, the butt, the butt, the butt. And it's like, didn't know what I was doing, passing terrible cards that I should have been keeping and stuff like that. And just like, I got hammered, and the game just owned me. I'm like, oh, that was just a miserable, like, several hours of my yeah. life. Now it's enough to be learning <laughs> a big game yeah, anyway. There's going to be a learning curve. But now yeah. the game itself is just sort of like pummeling you. Yeah. Uh, and that just seems like it'd be a bit of a, a hard thing to overcome. Yeah, it's it's tough when the game itself is beating you up and it's competitive. I feel like a really punishing game is much more appealing as a co-op and it's an easier yeah. sell as a co-op because yeah. then at least you're all banded together against a game that's trying to like rip out your soul. But it's hard when you're dis when you're competing with other people and the game is just destroying you while it's, it's doing It's tough, it. but it clearly has not gotten Agricola down. No. People love it because it's actually, because it's actually twice on BGG's top 10, so we had to put an Aura at the bottom. Yeah, that's <laughs> how much people dig it. Yeah. It's so much that it's on the list twice, and we had to swap an Aura at Labora and hope <laughs> that no swap. one picked up on the fact that we did that. A whole different Uve. Don't worry about people it. People love Agricola. They really, really do. Oh. And that's why it is BGG's number three, because yes. people love it that much. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into our number three. All right, so our number three is The Colonists coming in at 374 overall on Board Game Geek. And my thinking is that it needs to be ranked higher. So Steph, tell us why. So this one took me by storm when it, when it came out. I'm just, I'm like, I don't know if I want to play this. It's like, I hear it's a million hours long and it's just everything I love. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everything else. It's in my top 10. Like, I love The Colonists. It is, yeah, it's really, really, really great. Um, so what happens is, I think the, the main thing that people aren't really liking is that it's two hours per player to play this game. I mean, it's, it's a long experience. <laughs> if you want to play the full game, there are different ages, so you could just play age one and get the feeling for it. But in my opinion, age one is, like, pretty lame. Like, it's pretty lame. <laughs> so... It's only when you start building up because you are building up your like little area with buildings and doing different things. It's a big resource management, you know, engine builder game and you are doing all these things. And so it's much more rewarding towards the end of the game when you have all these huge things and you need more space and you don't have space and what do you do? And, and all these different things are happening. And <laughs> you just, so that's why you want to play that age four and age one is just like, all right, this is like, clockwork you know get the the farmhouse and get the more people and all these different things that you're doing that it's just like okay da 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 so it's more interesting as the game goes on and you can build these bigger buildings and that require a lot more goods and that you have to have the production for and get all these different things it's and so there isn't really much player interaction I, there's a little bit um but it's mostly solitaire mostly multiplayer solitaire there is a board though. So the board is getting built by the players each age and you're putting out these hexes. So you're gonna have to move from space to space to get the opportunity to buy a garage or something, th these different places. Now, the only player interaction that really happens is if you're on my space and I wanna go there, I'm gonna have to pay like a, a big fee for it. And so you might see that I wanna do that, but you might have somewhere else to be. It's just... <laughs> So I haven't really played with a, a lot of players because it's forever long, but two players, there isn't much player interaction. Yeah, I mean, this is one that, as you're describing it, it sounds super cool, but yeah. it does come down to having the time. Yes. You know, I want to have the time because if you're having a game day, like, that's, that's just gotta, that's gotta be the game That's you your whole day, yeah. yeah. I mean, what's really great is the, are the rules are so easy. Like, it's easy to learn and easy to pick up these mechanics because if you are already a gamer, you know, oh, this is like second nature now. Like it, you can go through these rules super easily, which is, it's hard because a lot of games these days don't really do that. It's long explanations. This is actually very simple to pick up. It's very familiar. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's you know, awesome, and, and yeah. if ever we, we have a day and we have the time. We got a whole week to set aside. I'd love just to settle into <laughs> it, you know? It's, it seems so cool, like, how, taking the time to kind of reap the rewards of your labor. Of, yeah, you know? your hard work all day. Uh, so that's super cool. Anyway, that is The Colonist coming in at number three for us. 374 <laughs> overall. So don't forget to go rank those games on Board Game Geek. And in the meantime, let's get into Board Game Geek's number two. two. Two 
it's going to be very familiar to all. It is ranked number 26 on BGG, and that is... Uh, you know, one of our favorites, Orleans. And we talk about this one a we lot. Talk a lot. Just a couple <laughs> times. We talk about it a it's lot. We talk about it a lot. It's a great game. It is. It comes up on a lot of BGG's list because it's very highly ranked. It comes up on our list a lot because it's very highly ranked. Um, yeah, so we're not going to go into it too, too much because we've talked about this on almost every list that we've had. But uh, Orleans is a bag builder um, game where you are getting followers as far as like knights and farmers and craftsmen and fishermen mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You put them in a bag, you run them around the bag, you pull out a certain amount, and then there you have a, your own board here that has a bunch of different, like, kind of worker placement spots that this one needs a knight, a craftsman, and a... Merchant. A merchant. And then you can then fill in those spots. Once you have it completely filled, you can then do that action. Right. And you're essentially trying to do a bunch of different things to try and get points. Um, and it's it's just, it's very, very good. If you have not fun. tried also, it... Also, uh, Clemens Franz's best cover, I think. No, no, it's not a good cover. I think it's a great cover. <laughs> he says the cover is not great. Come I think on, it's, pre it's pretty pretty bad. I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, no, see, see, Steph gets it. It's not a good cover. I do like the Altiplano cover more than Orleans cover. Yeah, Altiplano is better. It's 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 hard to beat an alpaca. <sighs> you you, I'll fight you on this. All uh, right. That's fine. Uh, but anyway, that is Orleans, 26 overall. <laughs> uh, number two from you, the folks at yeah. Board Game Geek, mostly because of the cover. Uh, so let's go <laughs> ahead and get into our number two. So now our number two has been mentioned before on Board Game Geek's list. It is Grand Austria Hotel. Oh, it's still so good. It's still so good. It's still so it's good. still so painful. Oh, it is. It makes you hurt so bad. It's man. The emperor's going to roll up and, and just, just be like, just you know, low sucks. marks on the entire hotel. It's very dirty. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 still great. It's excruciating. It's just we already talked about it. Again. We don't need to go the whole thing again. But uh, it's just it's a great great game. Yes, played it two players and just just That's go. It. The, it's so yeah. so. Leave good. it there. Two players, perfect. Indeed. The only thing about this game that I'm surprised about, I'm surprised it doesn't have an expansion because yeah, I'm surprised that, there isn't one yet. Could use right. It could use an expansion. So uh, just give me really more. Wish I had expansion, but nonetheless, I don't know why I want more of something so punishing, but yeah. I do. And that is our yeah, number two. two. Is a Grand Austria Hotel. Check it out. Play the two player if you haven't. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, let's get into Board Game Geeks number, number one. Ones. Now, what's special about this Board Game Geek and our number one, in fact, is number 25 overall, and that is the beloved Caverna. Crossover, crossover. Cross That's over. right. That's For right. once, we and the people all agree. Synergy, I think the best. Synergy, that synergy. Is, is. Yeah, that's Caverna. This is the best. We all, we all, we, we all, all know agree. what's up. We, we agree. All agree. This is in my top ten. Like this, so good. Yeah, I mean, it, it is so good, and clearly throughout the entire list, we've seen that Uwe Rosenberg and Clemens Franz uh, work. Pattern. They work together yeah. well, and this is kind of like the biggest, like build out the things and feed your people and do the stuff, farming games. Yeah. Um, and so it is complemented by that art. It is really, it's complemented by that art, all of this stuff. So much so that I thought the Colonist originally was an Uwe game. <laughs> I just saw the art and assumed it's it big was. Big enough, you know? looks familiar it's enough. A big box. It's the same size. Uh, but yeah. you're right. It's like the art is what complements the whole thing. But the, what's so great, one thing about the art of Caverna is just there's so many little things, like the, the couple making out on the back of the board and Gala there, and you're like, what is this? This is so great. <laughs> yeah, there really is a lot of good charm and humor yes. built into the game and the look. Just such little things all over the place. And one thing I like about Caverna, too, talking about not just the art, but like the mechanics, is it's a big worker placement game. And worker placement games as a whole are... are tough because you kind of have to front load all the information. There's no way to kind of avoid it. Usually. Yeah, a lot of times you have to teach every single spot on the board or else people just won't understand what they need to do. But Caverna is nice because you can kind of teach it as you go. Because yeah. as the game starts, you only have a certain amount of actions and each round you're turning over another action, but you don't have to explain those right away. Yeah. And that's Wait. really, really <laughs> nice. Now, don't worry, there's still about a billion buildings you have to choose from and I still have no idea what any of those do. All I'm like, I just, which one gets me the most donkeys? Because that's all <laughs> I'm trying to do in this game is have be the yeah, be donkey be the donkey king. Oh my god! And you guys need to play the expansion. Oh, I know, I know. You get like player them. abilities and different things that are happening. It's so awesome. It's so it's good. All the different things. Yeah, there's so many things, guys. I, I, I want to try them all. I want it. Oh my god! Yeah, there's just it, it adds so much like variability. It's it's unreal. And all this new building. So with, with if you're playing a new character, you have to put in you have to replace buildings on the original board. So you will get a new selection of buildings basically popping up. Um, so it's it's really it's lots of good things happening. <laughs> 
It's juicy. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Clement so Franz juicy. bringing the juice to games. <laughs> Get that on a shirt. Put that on a shirt. Start wearing it to cons. Clement Clement the visual bring the juice. juice for your games. Uh, anyway, folks, that is our top 10 Clemens Franz what a good guy. games. He's a good guy, that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we forgot to let you know that Steph Moonlights is the Kool-Aid man. Yeah, so. once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, folks, thank you so much for joining us for another 10 versus 10. Let us know what you think of our list and Board Game Geeks Indeed. list, your list, effectively, the in the comments below. And uh, make sure you rank your games on Board Game Geeks. You can help change the lists of the future. Uh, and uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And also make sure to let us know what kind of list you want to see us do next, what kind of publishers, what kind of mechanics. Also, put it down in the comments or put it on a board game geek uh the site itself absolutely and until next time we've been the three amigos doing it again yeah. uh and goodbye bye bye <laughs>